Good evening, and welcome to La Theatre de Phoenix. I'm your input-lagged host, Charles Redhead. Today on La Theatre de Phoenix, we tackle the hardest thing of any writing journey, the beginning, where we meet our cast of characters, a young brash lawyer, his best friend from childhood, a vaguely incompetent judge, and his plucky mentor. The cast are fairly prepared. The stage is set. My watch is on theatre mode. That's good. And this drink is going down a treat. So, without further ado, I present to you the first turnabout. August 3rd, District Court, Defendant Lobby. there. One moment, my friends. It seems we're encountering a bit of technical difficulties. Stay right there. I'll correct it. Should be fine now. Back to our scheduled program.
One moment, we're still having tech issues. And go. Dude! Dude! I'm so guilty! T -t Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence, I am afraid to die! What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, I, it's, it's all over! I, I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her! I can't! Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick! You gotta tell me! Who took my baby away? Hmm... The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. <laughs> He, he has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I own one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Bang! The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um, <clears throat> defense is ready, Your Honor. Him. <laughs> Mr. Wright. This is your first trial, is it not? Uh, yes, <laughs> Your Honor. I'm um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank... thank you, Your Honor. Hmm. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances... I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, I'm shaking. I say, fade in. <clears throat> Test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The uh, defendant? Well, uh, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Mr. 
next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Oh, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh, oh! No. No way. Oh, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix. Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim! <laughs> of course, of course I know the victim's name. I um, just forgot. <laughs> Temporarily. <laughs> oh, I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look. The victim's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. To hear your answer, who is the victim in this case? Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me what was the cause of death? Died because she was... She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. Much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honour. <laughs> because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. <clears throat> well, then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honour. Mr. Wright just told us the victim was struck with a blunt object. Can you explain to the court just what the object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the Thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. Oh, gavel, gavel. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um... Chief, uh, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You, you'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later. So be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Oh, oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. They all die. <laughs> I wasn't dumped. She, she just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. 
She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies. All of it. Lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Hmm. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude. No way. The, the victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sh sugar? Yes. Older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to the case. <laughs> Dude, Nick. What do you mean irrelevant? That cheat and she dog. I, I, I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Gabble, gabble, gabble. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question! You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? No. Well, did you? Or did you not? <laughs> Maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh oh, he went. What do I do? I know, I'll send him a signal. <clears throat> Tell the truth. Point. Er, uh, yeah, yeah. I was there. I went. Gabble, gabble. Order! Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor! The defendant is lying! Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime! Gavel! Order, order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Syatt to the stand. Mr. 
Mr. Scythe, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Scythe, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions, when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry, because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Mm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? The phone that Mr. Side used was one of these. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. This is it, the real deal. Uh, uh what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying. Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Oh, how do I prove he's not? <clears throat> you hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Touch the court record button and point out contradictions in the testimony. I was going door to door, sending subscriptions, and I thought it must be in it, up, left door, up, up and behind me. Think he's strange, look inside the apartment, so I lied. What, well, not when I quite, right, found myself unable to go inside. Call police immediately. Oh, in her apartment, work, work. Park phone, public. 1 p.m. 
Objection! You found the body at 1pm. You're sure? Yes, it was 1pm for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? No. Oh, that. Oh, uh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. Hmm. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, gee, that's, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. Oh, I've got this one. Objection! Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <laughs> you couldn't have heard a television or a video. Well, the defendant has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sowers. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That 
And you seem rather, oh, I do. Adam, you seem rather distraught. Yeah, don't, don't preempt me, boy. No. My, my apologies, Your Honor. Quite so. It, uh, it must have been the shock of, of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table, clock, in the apartment. Wasn't there. Yeah, a murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. I saw it. Table clock. Yeah. Murder weapon. Victim. Objection! Objection! Wait just a moment! The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now is this supposed to be a clock? What? You, you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sorit. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch, you just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems now? Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the, the, the apartment. <laughs> Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the... You're lying! <laughs> you were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Oh, that's how rules are so shocking. Oh, well, 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 well. Gavel, 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 gavel. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sorit. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. I 
understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burnt into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Well, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That... That day... I... I never... Look, uh, I... The clock... I heard... No! No! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It, it was him! I tell you, I saw him! He, he killed her, and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Oh, no, that was, that was terrible. Oh, that was uh, terrible. Uh, 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 gavel! Order! Order in the court, I say! Your Honor, uh, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright? Your Honor? You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honour. The sound Mr. Sawrit heard was definitely this clock. A fact Ooh. which is clear if you simply... Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honour, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Yeah. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawrit heard and the actual time of the death. So, Mr. Sawrit. Try to talk your way out of this one. You forgot one thing. Oh, what's he talking about? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! Oh. He's right! How am I gonna prove that? Damn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright? It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. No. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately. 
Devil! This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Soys. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens! They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! Oh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sight. Mm -hmm. Mia? I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But... That doesn't mean you still can't win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock is three hours slow. And... Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it? And let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright. You say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset a clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sorit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Gavel! Order, order, I say! Gavel, gavel. Well, hmm. this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected mr payne your client he uh he was arrested and has been taken away your honor very well mr wright yes your honor i have to say i'm impressed I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And the true culprit 
At the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but uh, this court finds a defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Yeah, I love not guilty verdicts. Yeah. Yeah. Gavel, gavel, gavel. And with that, the court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Saw it let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sorek grabbed the nearest blunt objects he could find. August 3rd, 2.32pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Oh, I still can't believe we won! <laughs> Right. Good job in there. Congratulations. Th th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Oh, not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since we've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry! You're supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? Ah, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I, I mean bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. This case is closed. But, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. <gasps> gone forever. <laughs> Larry, she was at... Ah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. H Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat! Oh no, I couldn't! Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook! Oh hey! Here, take this! It's a present! A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that, uh... Actually, I, I made this clock for her. I made one for her, and one for me. R really? You? You made this? <sighs> well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? 
<laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me. I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, so okay? Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh, 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 oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Let me go through my stuff. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she travelled. <laughs> she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take travelling. <laughs> well, make of it what you will. Oh, hey Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am? <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> I hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, Hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People do. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent bus. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks. And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me, unless you count the clock he gave Mia. Hmm. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the centre of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Well, very exciting. As you can see, a new legal hero has emerged. And thank you for sticking through all of the technical difficulties. The apologies for that. I've had the appropriate members of stage management shot. We're going to take a brief intermission now, but when we get back, more murder, 
more intrigue, more gavel, 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 and the emergence of a hot young prosecutor. Emphasis on the hot. See you after the intermission. Enchanté, ma chérie. Welcome back. I'm drunk. Now, it's time for the second half of our evening's presentation of entertainment. With that in mind, now that we've met our exciting cast of characters, it's time for Act Two, if you will. And Act Two precipitates a fall of our hero, a great loss. That's what Joseph Campbell says. But I wouldn't believe him. Bastard owes me 20 pounds. But with that in mind, we proudly present the next Phoenix Wright story, Turnabout Sisters. Ring, ring. Beep. Hello, this is Maya. Hey, Maya, it's me. Mia! What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, it's, I've been so busy. How you been? Well, lonely. And it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. Oh, that's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Oh, sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I, I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So, what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always liked toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now, you know I'm only teasing. Uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. It's not working? That's lame. Yeah, I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Hmm. Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way. Yeah. Can you come by the office tonight, say 
Nine o'clock to pick it up? I'll be in a pretrial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner, something good. Like burgers, I can really go for a good burger. Okay, okay, we'll hit the usual joint. All right, it's a deal. Okay, sis, see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Beep. Conversation recorded September 5th, 927 AM. September 5th, 857 PM. Fayo Co Law Offices. Now, Miss Fay, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Fay, you are a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? <laughs> oh, you are not cogniferous of my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I... I should have been more careful. <laughs> My dear Miss Fay, I am so very sorry. But I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Fay. Episode 2, Turnabout Sisters. September the 5th, 9.08 p.m., Fayanko Law Offices. Oh, I'm late. Huh? That's strange. The Chief must have gone home already. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out for dinner. Hmm. What's that smell? Blood. Mia! Maybe she's in her office. I'm going to move in there to the office. That smell. Blood! <laughs> this! Someone's there. Hmm? Chief? Chief? Chief! Who are you? A strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally, she was cold. Chief. The examiner. Chief. It's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here, she was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. 
the thinker. Lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. Let me add this to my records. Hmm. There's some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass. Lights stand lying broken in the back of the room. Let me add the glass shards there to the court record. Nothing else that seems like a hmm. A piece of paper. It must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? Hmm. A word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya. Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store dated yesterday. Add it to my court record. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I'd better call the police and find out what that girl was doing here. Right, I'd better. That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. It looks like someone was halfway through talking with taking it apart. Please? That's April May's line. I'll pick this up. Please come quick! What? What was that? Someone's screaming ah. from the outside the window. Oh, no! Ah. Huh? Ah. She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. Move over here. Hmm. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on the sofa. Uh oh. I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Hmm. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay. I work here. Maya. Maya Faye. Maya. Faye. Maya. So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. I never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. Get out of my pocket. <laughs> Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. <gasps> th th that's my name! Why? Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. Why would sis write my name? Uh-oh. Now I've done it. Wee-oo, 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 wee-oo. Huh? The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze! Police! All right, I'm Detective Gumshoe, see? 
gumshoe. Well, not name. We received the report from the building across the way, see? Got a person saying they saw a murder. It must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Great. Just great. Maya, wait. She wouldn't have... Nah. Ah! Excuse me. <coughs> this one. Maya here. It mean anything to you? Um, that that's my name. <laughs> the victim drew this here note in her own blood. See? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. Case closed! You're coming down the precinct, ma'am. What? Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy. But I couldn't sleep. I sat around, waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention centre. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6th, 9.07pm, detention centre, visitor's room. Well, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh. It's you, the lawyer. Good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well... That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'd better give it to her straight. It's up to you. To me? Yes. I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never gonna believe me, are they? Even you, when you found me in the office, you looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I never thought. It's okay, I understand. Mm. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Understudy. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ha! <laughs> so he crashed and burned. He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. 
Huh, sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who I'd go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said. Hmm. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to trouble you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit and watch. When I think of the person who did this to me, I... Hmm. I know. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Y yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. Uh, uh, acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. A uh, spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yeah. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yeah, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in a case? Um, right. She said something about that. Uh, hmm. I remember! Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Uh, her own voice? Yeah. I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it? Yeah, I forget how to delete those things. So, you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone. Let's hear it. Right. Oh. I just remembered that detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. So, you're an acolyte, a uh, medium in training. That's right. The Fate family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second. You said the Fae family. So, Mia was into this stuff too? Of course. She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class, too. I had no idea. Hmm. Hmm. Wait! What? So, you're a real honest-to-goodness spirit medium with ESP and all that? Yeah, in training. Well, can't you contact me as spirit then? We could just ask her who killed her. Hmm, 
I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm. I thought that would be too easy. Mm, um. Oh. I was wondering, could I, like, ask you a favor? Um. This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And while I'm in trouble, do you think you could ask him to represent me? Hmm. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Hmm. Say, what about your parents? Hmm. Hmm. I, uh, uh, I, I see. <laughs> Don't worry. Leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10 a.m. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? He told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until four o'clock this afternoon. And visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Right, I'll be back. September 6th, Fay and Co. Law Offices. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there. This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Uh, sorry. Oh, I know you from somewhere. Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, uh, I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? Right. He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you, uh... Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe. Right, at your service. Hey, hang on. That's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me Dick. Hey, Dick! Get over here! Uh, yeah, yes, sir. But be right there. Uh, <clears throat> you're a lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you better do it quick. Whew. He thinks I'm Mayor's lawyer. About Miss Fay, do you do? Did you do an autopsy? Hmm. You want to know the results, huh? Mm. 
Oh, don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. All right, all right. Y you can see the report, but, but that's all. Um, about Mayor. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't gonna win. But why'd you say that? The city's put out Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth? I'm sure you know what that means. You being a lawyer and all. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? I'll know him. He's a feared pr prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain. He doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Ah, oh, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So, Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumours of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. I was wondering, did you see Mayor Faye's cell phone? Oh, that? I have that. Do you think you could give it back? Sure. I mean, I mean no, wait, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Oh, uh oh, he's on to me. Okay, I can't be straight with this guy. But what should I tell him? Something the matter? Oh, oh no, um... Th th that carrying strap on the cell phone. This? Hmm, it says the Steel Samurai Warrior of Neo Oldie Tokyo. The Steel Samurai. That action hero on TV. Yeah. You see, that strap is a collector's item. She... was worried it might get lost if it went down to the precinct. That's what she said? Um, yes. Hmm, okay. Okay, pal. I wrote down all the numbers she called anyway. Here you go. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. I... I guess I... You all done there, pal? You have something to say? You done? Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll be heading out now. Oh. Oh, no, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influencing the witness with your loyally ways, pal. Mm. Come to think of it, 
I'd completely forgotten about her. The... witness? Yeah, Ms. April May. I'm sorry about this. But I can't be tell you anything about her. I can't tell you. I can't tell you nothing. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May. Huh. So you've sent her home already then? <laughs> You're trying your loyalty tricks on me now. She's not to go outside her room until the trial. So, she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try and get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. September 6th, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Well, hello there, handsome. Um, hi. <laughs> smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. <laughs> Memo to self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all just so exciting, I couldn't hardly contain myself. Ooh, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one. The late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the Fay and Co. Law Offices building, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognise her face from this distance, though. A bottle and two glasses are on the table. Somebody must be staying with her. There's a screwdriver stuck in this drawer. I wonder what's inside. Let's take a look. Hey! 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 What are you doing? No touching! Ooh, bad boy. You really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset. Would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the drawer. Do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Observe. Incident, you sound just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with a big vocabulary. Um, yeah, better not encourage her. Mm. Uh, you know that thing that uh, um, happened mm. <laughs> the other day, uh, the, the bad thing? Uh, what did you see when it happened? Mm. I don't suppose you could tell me about it. <laughs> Pretty please. Mm, let me see. Um, well, dream on. If you want to know.
know. You'll just have to come to the court tomorrow, Mr. Lawyer. Oh, boy. Um, could you... Just who exactly are you? Oh, Mr. Lawyer, are you hitting on me? N -n -n no, <laughs> hey, I'm just doing my job here. <laughs> Tee <laughs> you know, you're cute and you blush. Believe me, this is the first time in my life I've blushed this much. Um... <laughs> uh, right, uh, can you just tell me what it is that you do? Well, um, no. <laughs> and you had your little hopes up, didn't you? Oh, boy. I see there are two glasses on the table. Is someone staying here with you? What amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives, like on the television. Oh, no, no, uh, not me. I'm uh, <clears throat> just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage, hmm? Miss May doesn't like nosy little lawyers. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. Seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait here for him to come back. If that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing of the throat I've ever heard. Aha! So you're the one they say has been looking for me. Um, yes, yes, <laughs> that's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. Hmm, that badge on your collar. Ah, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Uh, yeah. Yes. Hmm. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> and what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Uh, please proceed. Not busy? Then how come no one could get in touch with you? Hmm. Something the matter? You come to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg, did you not? <laughs> well, here I am, boy. Uh, what do you want? Out with it, boy. Um, well, well, well sir, actually, um, it's about Mayor at uh, Mayor Fay. Uh, <coughs> ah, yes, uh, Mayor Fay. Uh, uh, go on. Hmm. What a strange reaction. Uh, cha -cha. I I'm really quite busy here, son. Uh, I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's uh, quite, quite impossible. <laughs> Wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? Uh, uh, anyway, uh, I'm afraid it's uh, entirely impossible for me to represent her. I'm sorry. End of discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? How can you just refuse like that? Please, tell me why you won't take on the case. Uh, <coughs> well, you, you see, it's just uh, I'm busy, you see. Uh, <coughs> but the client is Mia Faye's sister. <laughs> Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course. I know that. <laughs> However, 
I'm sorry. I'm, I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. Fine. <laughs> I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. <laughs> think, think not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. What do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. <laughs> but I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular case. I'm terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I... I cannot say. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but I, could you leave now? I've nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? How did you know Mia Fay? <laughs> she uh, worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. Learned by techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day, quite suddenly. She had a, a mission, you see. A mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a, a burning passion. Never looked back, that one. <laughs> That's uh, quite a painting. Aha! You noticed. It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The color of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least a three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. Jesus. <laughs> September 6th, 3.42 p.m. Detention Center. Visitor's room. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're back. Did you find the lawyer? Um, well, oh, what do I tell her? Well, see, I'll just be honest. I, uh, I really don't think you should use that guy. He, um, it didn't seem healthy. <laughs> he was all skin and bones. Mm. What really happened? Um, you don't mean he refused to help? Uh, oh, I see. I've been abandoned then. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, uh, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock that Larry made. It practically qualifies as a serial murder by now. So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around nine o'clock. The lights were off and... I could smell blood. 
Th then I found her. My sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young. And I don't know where my mother is. Don't know. So she could still be alive. The women in my family have been mediums for generations. They say that ESP runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. There was a man and he, he, he ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer, and she left the mountain. Hmm. So you live by yourself? Yeah, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent, or else I would lose my ESP. I feel bad for her, all by herself, up on that mountain. So, who is this man who, um, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads, and they were getting desperate. Wait. They didn't use a spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try and contact the victim. Wow. So what happened? The case was solved. We thought. You thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. Oh? The police's consultation with the medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But a man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud and the media jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became a laughing stock of the nation. I see. Hmm. White. Excuse me? White? That was his name. My sister told me. What? Hmm. Just a little longer now before the state appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you, whether you want me to or not. Hmm? Why? Why? Well... Hmm. No one is as sad as a person without any friends. I know. I've been there a long time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on their side. Maya. I won't abandon you. You can count on me. Mm. That's so kind of you.
Well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right. Thank you. Whew. She smiled at last. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yes. And I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? I... It's a deal. So, what next? There's something that's been bugging me. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer? It was when I tried to look into the drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are... Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment. At your service, sir. Oh, right. <laughs> I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, I believe her guest Miss May is currently using the, uh, <coughs> facilities. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Uh, please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Wait! No! Hey! <sighs> Why does it seem like every time I come here I end up embarrassing myself? Wait. Now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Ah! I almost forgot! Gah! Oh! <laughs> he came back quick. Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? That's how we say message. I'm very fancy. Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. All right. Sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined Mia and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? Let me, let me examine this. All right, look over here. All right, all. There's a screwdriver sticking out of that half-open drawer. Now's my chance to see what's inside. Hmm. What do we have here? A wiretap? Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? I'm going to add that to my court record. There is definitely something suspicious about Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all this. I know it. All right. I'll use this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to the bottom. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait up. Oh, I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, bellboy. Still there. Uh-oh. Time to scram. I'll look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. Sorry, my mic was on mute. Thank you to people in the Zoom for letting me know. That takes us to the end of our presentation of La Théâtre de Phoenix. Um, 
I'm so sorry. I, I tried to do a time estimate and it did not go to plan with the technical issues. We couldn't get to Edgeworth, but all the more reason for you to tune in next week. Um, can you, from the comfort of your own home, give a colossal round of applause for everybody who played tonight? They were all fantastic. And now I'm going to throw to the cast uh, for plugs and other various things like that. So we're going to start with who is on? We're going to start with Tash. So funny as April May. Tash, plugs from you, please. This is just how I actually speak. No, it's not. Uh, hi, I'm Natasha Hodgson. And if you want more uh, from a normal voice, check out the most recent episode of the Milk and uh, the Beef and Dairy Network, which I'm on. It's also just great generally, so you should listen to it. Yeah. Uh, who else we've got? Hannah, our fantastic Maya Faye. Hannah? Hiya. Um, yeah, I'm obviously not sort of an airhead Californian, but um, <laughs> uh, I would love it if you could tune in to Adventurers Wanted Under Gods. It's also live streamed um, on Twitch, and we've got a YouTube channel as well. So if you search on YouTube, Adventurers Wanted Under Gods, um, that would be great. Also, follow me on Twitter at Hala Out Loud like the bread and then out loud yeah perfect and john henry gavel 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 i know you've posted in the chat but give us a verbal plug anyway i i've already done that in the chat just very presumptuously gavel 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 uh thank you so much and yes i uh, at the story beast i tell uh terrifying stories uh on twitter i'm back on friday no oh on on twitch whatever this is Whatever this is, uh, I'm back on Twitch on Friday night and I'm doing a marathon reading of the Goosebumps books for charity on Saturday. Oh, wonderful. Angus. Angus, our wonderful Foghorn Leghorn Marvin Grossberg. <laughs> hello there. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, uh, what, what, that was huge fun. Um, if you are a D&D &D sort, which you probably are if you're watching this, I have a D&D &D podcast called Chaotic Adequate. Uh, just Google Chaotic Adequate and you better find that. And in the coming weeks, I'm going to be making available a completely illegal uh, audiobook of the Dune books. So if you follow me on Twitter, which I'll post my my uh, my Twitter in the chat, you can follow there for details. And how can this be? For he is the Quizat Adarak. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I could count on you, John. <laughs> ah, excellent. And uh, uh, Wolfgang Frank F Frank Sawit, you have plugs as well. Sawit saw it. That's the whole purpose of the pun. Is he gone? He's gone. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry. I just... Whew. Just waited as long as possible to get some food. Sorry. Sorry. Plugs? <laughs> plugs? Any plugs, Scott? Any any plugs for the... Uh, uh, subscribe to the thing? Danger Club podcast. Thank you. There we go. Uh, sorry for leaning out of shot. I'm just trying to post everyone's social media information onto the chat please give them love on twitter our biggest apologies to tom crowley who is miles edgeworth it's well worth the wait we're going to see you next week in terms of uh personal plugs this is going to be back next wednesday uh and also if you're a fan of online pub quizzes or pub quizzes in general but you can't actually go out i run a quiz every saturday at 8 p.m on my twitch channel it's called apoca quiz please do tune into that and if you enjoyed everything that you saw today, please go and give your favorite cast members a shout out. I know a lot of these cast members are on uh, websites like Coffee and PayPal. Please donate and support independent artists. I've got some donate links on my Twitch channel myself. Show some. Uh, and then finally, show some enormous love to all of the actors that you've seen today. I can hear your applause from here. Hit me with it. Come on. Give me that big applause break. That's it. Glorious, glorious. Gavel, gavel, gavel. Gavel, gavel, gavel. Okay, I'm going to finish up posting all of these links on the chat. But in the meantime, it's good night from us here at Le Théâtre de Phoenix. I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll be back with the exciting conclusion of Turnabout Sisters next week. Anyway, good night, everybody. See you later. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night everybody. Uh